In Onslow County, we appreciate and accept others as we realize that our strength comes from inclusion rather than exclusion. Volunteerism is the cornerstone for a caring community and the energy that brings people together for important causes. The smallest act of kindness is never wasted and is worth more than the grandest intention. We see this in all of our nominees, not because they necessarily have the time, but because they have the heart for service. Enhancing and promoting volunteerism is just one of the many resources United Way utilizes to effect change in our community. From the synergy of working together, it's not just one drop or a trickle of movement. It's a wave of action, a swell that changes lives through volunteerism. At the heart of our caring community's commitment to volunteerism is United Way's Volunteer Onslow. Founded in 1999, the volunteer, the volunteer and Nonprofit Resource Center has grown and evolved to become both the gateway to volunteer service for new volunteers and the connector between volunteers and local nonprofits. In 2017, Volunteer Oslo experienced 10% growth over last year. Measuring volunteer service valued at more than $4 million in sweat equity and connected thousands of local volunteers with more than 99 local nonprofits. You can find our website, volunteeronslo.org, which I hope you're all using to track your volunteer service. Uh, volunteer Onslow grew more from just over 100 101,000 page views in 2016 to more than 124,000 page views this last year. Volunteer Onslow is just one of 30 local programs, partnerships, and initiatives your United Way supports that impact over 27 lives annually. While the impact of volunteerism is most easily measured in hours served and sweat equity dollars saved for the community, Many of you in this room can attest that it's something much more. It's that feeling of community experienced during projects, events, and daily activities, as well as the look on the faces of the people that we serve that is the immeasurable, true impact of service. It's my pleasure to turn the program over to United Way's Impact Director and Director of Volunteer Onslow, Shelley Kiewig. As she comes forward, join me in applauding her efforts. We could not have done this event without her. She's awesome. Thank you, Ellie. It is an honor to work with so many of you who joined us here today, and I thank you all for your service in our community. At this time, I would like to introduce some of our partners and sponsors. We are honored to partner with the Jacksonville Daily News for the third year to highlight area light keepers and grow this award event to the top, community's top volunteer recognition. Please welcome first to the podium, Mr. Ken Warren from the Jacksonville Daily News. Um, yeah, this is our third year that we've been a, a part of this program, and I don't remember whose original idea was. I do remember the first meeting we had at the Daily News with Paula Reddick and, and a couple of other people and thought this was an, a great way that we could, we could feature the volunteers and do profiles on them and let the rest of the community see what wonderful work the people who are in this room and who have been honored the last couple of years really do for this, this community. And again, I, I just want to say thank you to everybody involved in this. This is such a great program, and we're actually trying to take it into other areas and say, look what we're doing in Onslow County, that, and we're trying to roll it out to some of our other newspaper partners. But the, the whole basis is the people in this room are doing things for the community because they think it, it's work that really needs to get done. And I sometimes say we're a really small community, and we it's a lot of the same people doing the work and really carrying on, on the traditions that we need to make sure that the people who, who need help get help. So from the, from the daily news, we just thank all of you for all of the work that you do in this community. Thank you, Ken, as well as all the other staff at the Jacksonville Daily News. 
I now invite the event's original and longtime presenting sponsor, Joan Sanso EMC. Representing Joan Sanso EMC is Steve Goodson, who is the Vice President of Energy Services. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight, today. I already messed up one time today, right there. Um, so I had to get a little history lesson from uh, our local historian, and anybody in this room knows that that's Glenn Hargett. So, um, long, yeah, we've been a long-time sponsor of this event. This, this, this Golden Rule Award uh, actually originated with a national retail chain, uh, and when they backed out for whatever reason, um, I'm sure that Glenn we were the first call that was made to step up and, and support this. And that, that, was, that was many years ago. Uh, I don't know, Glenn could probably tell you how long ago. Uh, but it, 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 it originated through with the Jack Swanslow Volunteer Center, which was housed in the uh, Onslow Community Ministries. And over the years, obviously, it's, it's morphed and changed hands. And now it's found a home with, uh, at, at the United Way, which is, which, which is obviously a great fit. Um, Jones Onslow operates under seven cooperative principles. I'm not going to go through all seven because um, I don't want y'all to be here forever, but one of those, those principles is concern and caring for the community. Um, I think Jones Onslow does that um, through just various things that we do, but more importantly, we, we, we not only try to, to talk about those things, but we try to do it, do those things. And the folks that we're honoring today, uh, they're out doing these things. Uh, they've been out. They've been out doing these things. So there's no gr greater testimony um, to one of our principles than to what these honorees uh, do or have done uh, day in and day out. A pretty unique situation. Um, I actually know or knew all of the honorees on this list this year. Uh, so that's that's kind of an interesting uh, tidbit uh, for myself. Uh, one is like a second daddy to me. Dr. Morgan. Uh, one is like a drill sergeant to me, even though he's a colonel, Kopka. Uh, one of them is a wolf packer, uh, Woody. Congratulations on, the, on that. And of course, Oliver and Otto and Jackie. Uh, I serve on uh, some boards with Jackie and had a lot of opportunities to work with Oliver when he was here. And uh, Mr. Taylor, his son, lit me up playing basketball many a times. And uh, he's just donated just so much of his time to to our local youth. So uh, these are great honorees. Uh, I don't think we could have picked, y'all could have picked better candidates. Uh, and once again, Joe Zanzo is just, just thrilled that we can again partner with everyone involved. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Joe Zanzo EMC really sets the standard in Anzo County for community support and good corporate citizenship. And we thank you for all you do for our county and for United Way. I'd also like to thank the Courtyard by Marriott for their generous sponsorship of this event and for this, all the support that they provide for United Way. We truly treasure the relationships that we've made and the ability to use this magnificent, magnificent, I cannot speak, magnificent space. <laughs> um, before I start the awards presentation, I would like to say a special thank you to our judges. Please stand when I call your name. Kimber Bell with the Smoking Bowl, Christy Dutton with MSA, Joel Houle, Museum of the Marine, and a former Golden Rule Light Keep winner, and Crystal Massey with Marine Chevrolet and Cadillac, and Teresa Jackson, a volunteer for our community. Thank you for taking time to ensure that people deserve, who deserve the recognition get it. We do truly appreciate all that you do. Now if I could please have Ellie come up and uh, help to assist me. I am honored to be able to present the Youth Award. It makes my heart happy to see our youth giving back to our community at such a young age. This year's youth nominees are and please stand as I call your name. Angel Leah Brinson, Jessica Blackburn, Juliet Desmaris, Nicholas Sanders, Anne Marie Shepherd, and the Ons Memorial Hospital of Volunteers.
Thank you. So our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Youth Award runners-up play an important support role in the day-to-day -day activities of a fast-paced hospital. From directly assisting with patient care in the wards to learn the protocol of a busy emergency room, these teens are impacting the lives of many people. Their service to others expands beyond the walls of the hospital with hosting blood drives and wrapping gifts at the mall for the American Red Cross. The hands-on knowledge that they're gaining will help them to make positive choices as they go through life. Congratulations to the Owens Memorial Hospital Volunteers. Please come up to the podium to accept your award. You guys want to come together get a picture real quick? Thank you. The 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Youth Award goes to an individual who began volunteering after Hurricane Matthew hit our community. She's worked through the emergency disaster services and continued on through Christmas cheer. When she saw the need at the Salvation Army, she began volunteering for them. She does anything asked of her, whether it's stocking, uploading and unloading, cleaning, serving meals, retrieving groceries from their pantry, she does it all. Not only has she clocked in over 150 hours of volunteer time, she maintains a 4.0 GPA and plays both volleyball and softball. She's a busy girl. Not to mention the extra time and work that comes with being part of the engineering program at her school. Her dedication to the community and fellow mankind is inspiring to many. She says she loves seeing the smiles on the faces of the people she serves but today she's putting a smile on all of our faces. It's my great honor to welcome your 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Youth Award winner, Juliet Desmaris. Please join us at the podium to collect your award. Thank you and congratulations to all of our youth nominees. Groups of individuals or family volunteers can make a big impact in our community. By working together, groups can make the impossible possible. This year in the adult group category, we recognize groups of individuals who have made a lasting impact in many, on many residents here in Onslow County. This year's nominees are, and please stand to be recognized as I call your name, Disabled American Veterans, Chapter 16 Volunteers. Ja Jacksonville Onslow Crime Stoppers Volunteers. Catherine Ball, Carol Davis, and Chantisha Williams of Tri-County Crusaders. Dr. Jim and Dr. Virginia Wilson of Onslow Community Outreach. Congratulations to all of the adult group nominees. It was a joy to read all of your stories and see the differences you have all made in our community. And thank you for your service. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Group Award Runner-Up.
is a group of volunteers that partner with area law enforcement to help keep Onslow County safe by helping to get criminals off the streets. Through their reporting system offered to residents, more than 700 arrests and apprehensions have taken place since they started. They offer anonymity to callers, which in turn allows for more reports. Not only have they helped make law enforcement's job easier, they assist with National Night Out and have also created a scholarship program for students. They are able to pay for the tips by support from businesses in our area and by their annual barbecue lunch, which takes place in March. They have received over 5,700 tips to date. They have been recognized several times for their outstanding and innovative ideas. Thanks to them, we can all feel safer as we kiss our kids and put them to bed for the night. Today, we would like to congratulate the Jacksonville Onslow Crime Stoppers Volunteers as our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Runners Up. Please come, to, please come and accept your award. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Group winner is a pair of volunteers who are not only devoted to each other, they're devoted to helping patients who cannot afford the dental services needed to give them a better quality of life. They have contributed over 240 hours of free care and thousands of dollars in equipment and supplies needed to open the Caring Community Clinic. Some of the services they provide are exams, x-rays, and extractions. They are firm believers that in a country as wealthy as America, we should be able to take care for the people in our community that need medical services and don't have the resources to pay. They are not only angels to their patients, they are angels to all of us. There is no greater treasure than to be able to give back, and for doing so, we thank you. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Group Award winner, Dr. Jim and Virginia Wilson, Alza Community Outreach. going sorry <laughs> our 2018 golden rule lightkeeper education nominees are like no other volunteer educators open up a world of opportunity for their students they provide knowledge share experiences and teach skills that enable their students to have a deeper understanding of their world and the world around them our golden rule education award nominees are and please stand as I say your names Anne Marie Brummer with Southwest Middle School, Donna Gargett, Blank Canvas Awareness Art, Joyce Robinson from Northwoods Park Middle. Congratulations to all of our Golden Rule Education Award nominees. Your commitment to assisting others in the attainment of knowledge is remarkable. Our 2018 Golden Rule Education Award runner-up knows all too well the struggles of middle school students. They are known to be moody, unintentionally disrespectful, and completely misunderstood. 
Thanks to this nominee, these students are encouraged to tap into their creativity and not only make a product that is useful, but one they can take pride in too. Her dedication to the sewing center has been an invaluable is, I'm sorry, has been invaluable in providing a hands-on experience to the students who might otherwise never have an opportunity to learn what was once considered an art. Her knowledge is not limited to just sewing and her enthusiasm has expanded to a number of available activities and has given students more choice and more reason to visit the media center. Her creativity and dedication has made a positive and lasting impact on their student body and they are forever grateful. Please join me in presenting the 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeepers Education Runner-Up Award to Anne Marie Bremer. Please come to the podium to accept your award. Thank you. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Education Award winner provides education, tutoring, advocating, and mentoring for those with learning disabilities such as dyslexia, ADHD, and ADD. She has created awareness through billboard campaigns, training, and providing information to parents and teachers. Because of the awareness art shows, she has given adults a positive platform to address their experience with learning differences. She has provided a safe environment to have families come together and discuss their needs, put tutors in place to help students that were not receiving specialized help, and has provided solutions to families and information so they can properly advocate for their children. She has brought artists together from all over the world to help tell their story of dyslexia through art. She has partnered with several other nonprofits such as the Horse and Family Institute, to spread her mission of colorful solutions for learning differences, and she has made a positive impact. Because of her personal battle with dyslexia and not having the resource, she is making sure that her community gets informed. She is fully committed to making a difference in the lives of our community, and her efforts are being felt by many. Your 2018 Golden Light Keeper Education Award goes to Donna Gargett. Please come to the podium. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Individual nominees are like no other. They have given so much of themselves to our community, and we are truly blessed to have them here in Onslow County. Our volunteers are advocates, mentors, coaches, educators, friends, and professionals. They have a love for the community and want to continue to see it grow and flourish. This year's nominees are, and please stand as you're being recognized, Sarah Arbelez from the Girl Scouts. Marty Armstrong, United Way of Onslow County. Mary Bundle, Girl Scouts. Lakeisha Cole, Community Building and Marketing. Lisa Hamner, Sneeds Ferry Volunteer Fire Department. Catlin Hester, Possumwood Acres. Carol Jamison, Relay for Life. Millard Mac Moody, Guardian Ad Litem and DAV. Tim Moore, Volunteer EMS Rescue. Tim Supple, Mountain to Sea Trail. Regina Thomas, Girl Scouts. Teresa Tony, Boys and Girl Scouts. Devin Wheeler, United Way of Onslow County. Chief Joseph Williams, Hubert Volunteer Fire Department. Congratulations to all our Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Individual nominees. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for your commitment to this community. It's exceptional and it goes without saying how extremely thankful we are to be your neighbors. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Individual Award runner-up is a Marine, a husband and a father who goes out of, his, out of his way to dedicate any extra time he has to volunteering in the community. He not only volunteers for United Way, but also for the Onslow Community Outreach's Soup Kitchen, Sneed's Ferry Shrimp Festival, and National Night Out. He has played an important role in volunteering for the jobs that most volunteers would stay away from, including maintaining the yard at both our properties and maintenance when things at the office are falling apart. Regardless of the weather, he will put a smile on his face and complete the jobs that need to be done. On more than one occasion, he has volunteered from sunrise to sunset, even when he's worked all day. He will come by and assist us when needed. He takes a leadership role at the events and can always be counted on when needed in a pinch. His great attitude and dedication have been recognized by not only the staff, but by other volunteers as well. He continues to amaze us with his willingness to help with any situation that comes about. He is such a great asset and we are truly grateful for all he does. Please join me in presenting the 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Individual Runner-Up Award to Devin Wheeler. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Individual Award winner is a person who not only uses his training to train others, but stands alongside of them while they work. An active duty Navy corpsman and father, he also volunteers at an EMT in Swansboro. Having once been a trauma medic and a case, a case back corpsman <laughs> aboard helicopters in the Navy, he needed more of a challenge than that of an instructor so he looked for the largest and busiest district in Onslow County and jumped in. He has since become a critical part of the Swansboro EMS mission success. Obtaining the rank of captain, he is responsible for training younger volunteers in the clearance process, operation of rescue vehicles, and adherence to medical protocol guidelines. He has provided many hours of volunteer work and is a great leader to the squad. In his own words, he says, his work keeps him medically sharp, but volunteering as an EMT offers him tremendous rewards because of the benefits to the community. No matter what's out there, he says, to pick something that you can be passionate about that improves the lives of somebody else. It is this passion that has won him the hearts of many and the winner of this very prestigious award. Our 2018 Golden Rule Lightkeeper Adult Individual Award goes to Tim Moore. Please come up and accept your award. Maybe he got called out. <laughs> Is there anyone to accept his award? Well, I know. Congratulations, Tim. Congratulations to the 2018 Golden Rule Light Keep winners. You have inspired us all, and we are truly grateful for your dedication to and support of our community. As we continue to honor our volunteers, please join us in welcoming Lorette Legan, Vice Chair of the Onslow County Civic Affairs, for the presentation of the Fabric of Our Community Awards.
Hello, everyone. Many cultures celebrate those who have led them, inspired them, guided them, and helped to give people their inspiration, hope, guidance, and action. Today, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee seeks to embody those who, within our lifetime, have done that for Onslow County. During the recognition of the far-reaching effects of the Beirut bomb blast of 1983, our community recognized that the fabric of the community had been torn by the loss of so many on that single day. Our community lost the potential of what could have been from the lives. Also, the lives lost that day were so interwoven that we also lost their valued contribution to the civic infrastructure. The Onslow Civic Affairs Committee was born of an effort to assemble people who were part of the fabric of our community to recognize how we can improve our community through civic education. Ours is a diverse committee made up of elected officials, community leaders, educators, nonprofit leaders and workers, people with military and civilian backgrounds, and regular citizens who want to improve and better our community. The committee was unanimous in adopting an effort to preserve and recognize those whose actions have spoken loudly and whose contributions to the fabric of our community have made it strong and our future brighter. Last year, we recognized Eldridge Page, Itchy Popkin, Diana Diverser, Glenn Hargett, and Fanny Coleman as our inaugural class. Today, we recognize the second group of individuals inducted into the fabric of our community status. Our work will build a quilt of citizens being honored. The criteria for selection is, there, is for there to be an unquestioned contribution to bettering our community through a single action that has an enduring benefit or a lifetime of work that has demonstrated a pattern of actions that together have contributed to strengthening our community. The members of the recognition group today unquestionably demonstrate this. Today, members of the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee will give recognition to these individuals with a small stretched piece of fabric that will represent a quilt of many citizens whose collective work will inspire other generations into the future. So now, I think it's appropriate that we invite all the members of the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee to come forward to help induct these individuals into our quilt of persons whose contributions truly reflect the fabric of our community. Okay, all right. At this time, I'd like to invite the family of Oliver Hill to please come forward. Oliver Hill was a visionary, leader, activist, servant, and community organizer. He passed away February 2, 2017, leaving behind many interests that he had connected, many projects that he had advanced, and many people whom he had brought together, all of which helped to make this a better community. While born and raised in Jones County, much of his work was in Onslow County, and also his influence has most significantly been felt here. He served officially and unofficially as a liaison between various communities, cultures, and activities. He was a valuable asset in the city of Jacksonville's weed and seed program, advancing work that would give greater value to the young black male population, and making a significant impact on work to advance low-income owned businesses. He founded the Northeast Community Development Corporation. The Most Intriguing Woman Awards were created by him as a fundraiser for the organization. It continues to serve to raise up women of color for their achievements. He had several passions for advancing the community and served on the Jacksonville Onslow Council for the Arts, the Civic Affairs Committee, Dads Willing to be Dads, and Onslow United Transit, as well as many more. Oliver is remembered for many things, but that he provided communication between disparate groups was likely his greatest benefit to our community. Oliver Hill brought a perspective that was both personal and representative of our diverse community, and used his connections to advance a vision of a better community, a community with a strong, supportive fabric for all members. Sandy, if you'll present. 
The fabric square reads, from this day forth, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee has designated that Oliver Hill is forever to be known for his significant contributions to improving, strengthening, and benefiting the fabric of our community. Inducted Friday, February 23, 2018. Otto Taylor, please come forward. A humble man who saw a need to advance sport as a means of guiding youth in the right direction. Otto Taylor is credited with helping build a legacy of basketball and sport in the community. He was part of an all-volunteer project that gathered newspaper boys to practice basketball aboard the base after they had sold papers in the afternoon. That led to a partnership with Phil Kroom to create the Grants Creek Gym and eventually the formation of the Grants Creek Nursery All-Stars. Hundreds have benefited from this after-school program run by volunteers to teach basketball and learn the value of good citizenship. The proud father of a college basketball coach that held summer camps to encourage others to play ball, he took his advocacy for youth programs, the value of sport, and the value of community action for positive advancement of youth to become an inaugural member of the Jacksonville Onslow Sports Commission. There, he was an advocate for bringing sports competition to our community, rather than playing championships and other tournaments away from Jacksonville and Onslow County. Unafraid of defeat for his teams, Otto Taylor believed strongly that bringing in competition to play local teams would increase the level of talent in our community. Otto was, and has been, a connection to young people and those who wanted them to have a better life, an opportunity to play ball, and an opportunity to know people in the community care about them. He has contributed to our community fabric with a sincere concern for young people and taken personal action to ensure they are involved. The Fabric Square reads, from this day forth, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee has designated that Otto Taylor is forever to be known for his significant contributions to improving, strengthening, and benefiting the fabric of our community. All right, Woody Myers, you're up. Woody Myers has helped build our community, not only with lumber and stone, but also with action. A contractor and builder, he helped to advance the construction of the Beirut Memorial. He was an inaugural member of the Beirut Memorial Advisory Board, a joint effort of the bases and the Jacksonville mayor. He was key in the construction and installation of the memorial, investing both time and financial resources he controlled to ensure it was both a worthy tribute and fitting representation of our community. The Beirut Memorial Advisory Board selected Woody Myers to be the first member to present a wreath at the annual observance. His continued service on this board is a demonstration of his commitment to this effort. He is a strong voice for tradition and honor as part of the annual observance the board coordinates. His commitment to the military continues today through his service with the Military Affairs Committee of the Chamber. The Military Affairs Committee affords opportunities for military and civilian leaders to network and to foster good community relations. He's a fixture at meetings, events, and the community fish fries, usually ensuring each service member is welcomed with a ticket. Mr. Myers is a strong supporter of the Coastal Carolina Community College Foundation and has received Man of the Year Award for his work with the Beirut Memorial and other contributions to our community. This avid NC State supporter is humble when asked about his work and he's a great cheerleader of others. Just as the infamous bomb blast of 1983 created a ripple in the fabric of this community, Woody Myers' actions demonstrate a commitment to repair and improve the fabric of our community. From this day forth, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee has designated that Woody Myers is forever to be known for his significant contributions to improving, strengthening, and benefiting the fabric of our community.
It's been a good run. Ms. Jackie Barton, please come forward. A renaissance woman of power, motivation, and truly someone who has reinvented herself many times, Jackie Barton continues to achieve great things. Her military husband brought her to our community, where she distinguished herself with service to various organizations in activities including Montford Point, her church, and Eastern Star. She was a power with the Beasley Broadcast Group, achieving million-dollar production goals several times. Even while doing that, she dabbled in restaurants on the side before moving full-time into the restaurant business. Now the first African-American franchisee of Honey Baked Hams, the first franchisee to have an operation aboard a military installation, and the first to have one in an airport, Jackie Barton continues to reinvent this business. Her activities outside of work have served to improve the community with volunteer activities that have advanced a number of nonprofits to sharing her marketing experience with groups. That is sometimes seen in her gathering of people seeking help around her table in her restaurant to give them guidance. She is now part of the Jacksonville Onslow Sports Commission, using her marketing skills, love of the community and sport to help foster economic development through sport. Her gift of knowledge has benefited many causes. Her personal leadership has given success to such programs as the White Oak Basketball Recreation League, and her personal mentorship has given hope to young people at risk. And now she continues her work with helping other veterans transition into the world of entrepreneurship. Jackie Barton's influence and actions have served to strengthen our community's fabric. I bet y'all got this by now. From this day forth, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee has designated that Jackie Barton is forever to be known for her significant contributions to improving, strengthening, and benefiting the fabric of our community. Wow, I'm, I'm very humbled um, to be in such great company. Um, I have to say this, um, I give all thanks to my Lord and Savior for even the opportunity to be up here. I've been blessed with a mom that has taught us, her and my dad have taught us ethics and morals from, and hard work never hurt anybody from when we were younger. Um, I've been honored to have a soulmate that has allowed me to uh, enhance my vision. Michael Barton, my mom, Janet Murray, both of them are here with me. They help me do what I do every day. We just try to do the right thing. And it is amazing that our whole philosophy is do better tomorrow than we did today. So thank you very much. Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Colonel John Kopka, USMC retired. A former Camp Lejeune Chief of Staff, Colonel John Kopka was instrumental in connecting the military and civilian community during his service to our country. While a member of the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee, the Colonel manifested the belief that if it was good for the community, it was good for the Marines. The Colonel can be seen working as the parking lot manager for dozens of events throughout the year, but is best remembered for his ability to connect people who can make things happen. His astute ability to see solutions for common issues led to the quiet success for many challenges that faced our area. An inaugural member of the Jacksonville Onslow Sports Commission Board of Directors, Colonel Kopka's background with military sports, combined with his passion for bettering our community, had advanced the Sports Commission to its current level of success. This year, he will host a special reunion of military persons who played sports while in the service. In his decade of work with Coastal Carolina Community College, he was adept at connecting veterans with programs that could improve their lives. It was said that some of his counseling sessions went far beyond coursework at the college, but sound advice about life and preparation for after the service. In his work with the Military Affairs Committee, he helped both military and civilians understand the perspective of others and worked to bridge the gap. His stern demeanor betrays a softer side that becomes evident when he is welcoming new residents to our community, welcoming a young Marine into a volunteer position, and guiding young people to make the right decisions. 
He's frequently the one that makes sure that a young Marine volunteering for a post gets water, is properly fed, and taken care of. Recognized by our community for his after-career work, his connection to others, his counsel, and his selfless volunteering, his leadership, and his caring that makes our community fabric more durable and significantly more resourceful. Fabric Square reads, from this day forth, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee has designated that Colonel John Kopka, USMC retired, is forever to be known for his significant contributions to improving, strengthening, and benefiting the fabric of our community. Hoggett told me I had to keep it under an hour. <laughs> So I'll, I'll try to do that because I know all of you have many things to do. The room is filled with uh, individuals who give up their time, talent, treasure. I'm just a fortunate one to win an award. I just had to touch you. <laughs> Did you just touch me? <laughs> the second point I would like to make is that I, like Jackie Barton, I can do four today. I would like Jackie Barton, thank God for being able to do what I do. Without family, friends, and whatnot, you can't do the things we do. I would like to take you back and staying with the theme. I was here in October of 1983. I was a CEO of Third Battalion, Fourth Marines. We got the call at 0400. For you ECU graduates, that's 4 a.m. <laughs> okay, for you Chapel Hill graduates, that's when the big hand's on the 12 <laughs> and the little hand's on the 4. For you Duke graduates, study it. <laughs> Joe Crockett was the duty officer at Headquarters Marine Corps. He called the commanding general, second marine division, General Gray. And Ed Kelly, now retired Major General Ed Kelly, and myself with the two battalion commanders. There is no way to describe what went on the next 24 hours under a continuing resolution from the Congress and the number of young men who were injured or killed in Beirut that particular Sunday morning. I can tell you from where I sat here you define fabric of the community. It's in the way we were treated here by the people who live, breathe, and work in Onslow County and in Jacksonville specifically. General Gray assigned every commissioned officer to a family. I happen to have Larry Gerlach's wife, Pat. Larry Gerlach was the commanding officer of 1st Battalion, 8th Marines. I spent three nights from 20, about 2300 to 0700 then get back to work, Kopka, with that family. I listened to 12 wives talk about their husbands not knowing they were dead. Fabric of the community. We made it through those three days in my part because of the people in this room who said, we're with you. Dr. Ken and Mrs. Mary Morgan, please come forward. This power couple has served in elective office, philanthropic efforts, and have been clear leaders in the United Methodist Church of North Carolina, all while creating a legacy of dental service in our community, our region, and beyond. Dr. Morgan was a member of the Jacksonville City Council, a former member of the UNC Board of Governors, president of the NC Dental Association, a JC, and an early supporter of the Chamber of Commerce, as well as the first cancer drive in our community. He has been a strong and now emeritus member of the Onslow Caring Community Foundation. Together with Mary, the two have been outstanding supporters of the UNC School of Dentistry and a proponent for the funding of the School of Dentistry at ECU. Mary has served on the Onslow School Board and the North Carolina School Board advocating for students as well as for teachers and staff benefits. 
Seeking a method to recognize academic scholars, Mary won key contributions solicited from Alvin Morton of Jones Onslow EMC and Grady Strickland of Carolina Telephone that became the foundation for the now immensely popular Sponsors for Academic Talent program. Dr. Morton created the drive for the Pop Warner Football League that has served so many. He helped to create the field that now exists at Jacksonville High School, as well as other fields. He has been inducted into the Jacksonville Onslow Sports Hall of Fame for his contributions to the advancement of sport in our community. The Morgans have held many offices and performed many functions in their church and in the United Methodist Governance while practicing a servant mentality to demonstrate their faith. Together, the two have created an opportunity that led to the first dental clinic associated with the Caring Community Clinic operated by Onslow Community Outreach. The pair have also contributed to the Freedom Fountain and many other causes, and by their actions on committees, boards, foundations, and many other groups have caused our community to remember those who benefit from the benevolence of others. The fabric of our community is stronger, broader, and better because of the actions of Dr. Ken and Miss Mary Morgan. From this day forth, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee has designated that Dr. Ken and Mrs. Mary Morgan is forever to be known for their significant contributions to improving, strengthening, and benefiting the fabric of our community. Colonel Cock preached the sermon. I'm going to do the benediction. <laughs> In uh, 1959, when my sweet wife and I were coming to Jacksonville, North Carolina, driving into town, no air conditioning, windows rolled down, two-year-old child, pregnant, seven months pregnant with another one. My wife turned to me and she says, I promise you one thing. I'll never live here the rest of my life. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but. Being the uh, person I am with a positive mental attitude, I said, sweetheart, we're going to come here. We're going to turn this upside down, this place upside down, turn it around. It's going to be a great place to live. On Sunday, the first Sunday we were here, we went to Trinity United Methodist Church. The little old ladies grabbed Mary by the hand, took care of her, and one or two of those gruff Marines, Colonel Copka, that were in our church, and some of the other people said, now what do you want to volunteer for? <laughs> I said, well, sir, I don't know. Just tell me where you need me. So uh, we uh, have been volunteering, enjoying life here in this community, proving without a doubt this is the most sharing and caring community anywhere. I want to emphasize that again. The most sharing and caring community anywhere. So we are greatly honored to be part of this prestigious Fabric of the Community Award. Thank you for the many things all of you have done for us. I would like to close with uh, a quote that uh, we Methodists use in our church quite frequently. Uh, it's the rules of life uh, selected from the writings of John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. The rules of life are this. Do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Thank you so much. And I was trying to move the program along and I was remiss and did not give Oliver Hill's family nor Mr. Taylor a chance. So please, if you, either of you would like to make remarks, feel free to come on up. Go in once. All right. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Mr. Taylor.
First of all, I want to thank God for my being here and for all the wonderful faces that I see in this building today and thanking the organization that have put this together. Uh, I feel so very small with all the giants that I see in helping and working with the community of Jacksonville, North Carolina. It doesn't feel, feel fair for me to receive this award. The reason is because I get more out of doing what I do by the blessings of the young men and women that I work with. I'm filling up, and so I just want to thank everyone, all the young men and women that have came through the program, which have been close to 5,000 in the 50 years. that we have been doing this, starting with my son Benji, which now is a college coach. My grandson just signed a pro contract three weeks ago. All came through the program. That's a blessing. The rewards, I, I appreciate it. But you guys have given me more than I could ever give you. Thank you again. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Good afternoon. Uh, truly, I don't feel worthy to stand in this place, but I do stand on behalf of Oliver Hill. I am his pastor, uh, and so I still believe that I am family. I am Reverend Amy Ciceron, and he served at the St. Julia AME Zion Church in many capacities, but many of you have known him far longer than I did with all that he did right here in Jacksonville and Onslow County. All that Oliver did would pale in comparison to many. And so um, I am grateful for who he was. He always kept me connected. I thank him for all that he did, not only for uh, the community in general, but for the young men that he, was, he stood in, and was an advocate for and was a voice for. I, I will leave us with this, that on the day of his service, I preached a sermon entitled, Call to Serve where I looked at Isaiah when God said, who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, here am I, send me. And I think that if we all continue to take this with us, that we'll continue to live in this community that the Morgans just shared is the greatest community that there is. That if we take it upon ourselves to understand that we all have been called of God to serve, whether that service be small or great, that we all can do something. I believe the legacy of all of those that have, have shared here on today, the legacy of the young, the legacy of the mature will live on forever. I am grateful again to stand in this place and I just ask that we would remember all that Oliver was, uh, but that we would now take that spirit that he had and continue the works that he'd begun. Thank you so much. Today we have contributed to a small quilt of recognition. Only 11 panels create our quilt today. While the space they cover is small, these people have made a significant impact on our community. The Onslow Civic Affairs Committee will add panels to our quilt as time goes on and as the contributions to improving the fabric of our community continues. What will your legacy be? How will you contribute to the fabric of our community? For those not involved and are willing to pick up the mantle, we asked you to consider joining a board or a commission, volunteering, participating, find the way you can get involved. <clears throat> the names on our panels and most of the volunteers who have been honored today have something in common. They stood up. They responded to the needs in our community. They made a positive contribution. If you're not contributing, again, we welcome you uh, to expose you to volunteerism, how you can be of service to your community, and of course, be active on a committee or a board. Thank you.
Thank you, Shelley, and thank you to all of the volunteers in this room. These nominees carry the volunteer spirit often through loving sacrifices that demonstrates their generosity, that no award or commendation can equal the satisfaction that comes from reaching out to a neighbor in need. A special thank you to our partners at the Jacksonville Daily News for highlighting all of the nominees with their stories in the paper. By doing so, you have not only given them a way to hold on to this memory, but you have also raised awareness on volunteerism and the impact it has on the community. To all of our sponsors, thank you for recognizing the value of volunteerism and your support for making this event possible. To my fellow members of the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee, Thanks for this mutually beneficial partnership, the creation of this pinnacle award, and the merits of those who have been named today and in the past justify our time to recognize what makes this community great. We also want to thank the City of Jacksonville and Onslow County Government, whose grant support of Volunteer Onslow represents a commitment to strong nonprofits and their ability to affect change. To my incredible staff, who inspire me every day, job very well done, and to each and every one of you who came out today to support your favorite volunteer, thank you. Thank you for making this day one that they will remember forever. They are truly blessed to have you in their lives. As we close this celebration, I hope you take a moment to reflect. Reflect on the stories of inspiration you heard today. Reflect on the lives and the neighbors in need. Those incredible individuals have impacted for the better. And lastly, reflect on what you can do or encourage others to do to make our community a better place to live. And I hope to see you all at our event, Vine and Dine, on April 13th at the American Legion. I hope to see you there. It's another way that you can just support our community. So please, everyone, join me in one final round of applause for all those recognized, and have an awesome day.